Campbell, um, we're doing a presentation on building the, in, the operations of the ultimate independent gym. So I've got Gina here, so Gina is one of the independent gyms that came on board for us. We've got a trial going at the minute, and um, I'll explain what we're doing in that. But the session that we're going to go through today is this. So we've done a beta trial. So the beta trials, we're trying to build all the procedures, all the policies, all the risk assessments, and all the tasks that the ultimate independent gym needs. Now, in starting this process off, we quickly found that the variance is huge. So I'm going to explain the variance and then ask the questions as to why. You know, what, what does this one do different than this one doesn't, etc. So I'm going to go through that. So that's going to be operations in numbers. I'm then going to go through training. How much training do you need to be good? Um, then we're going to go through some basics that people keep on missing. Uh, and then Jean is going to talk about what she's found in the process of coming on board for the beta. Which is quite important. So, the beta test, what was this for? So I've got, I've got two businesses. I've got OpsPal, so OpsPal is a, is a product called, it's, it's your operational pal, a bit cheesy, but that's what it's for. It's to try and help you run your business. My other business is CC Leisure Solutions. So I've been doing consultancy now for probably about 15 or so years. I look after about 125 council trusts, universities, and I go all around the country, and I don't see anywhere where people can share best practice. Right, you go to certain things like, so in the future, what I would like with this, we've now got seven or eight organizations around the table, uh, all different sizes, from like small BTs, up to 7,000 yeah. 7, member sites. So really, really, it's quite a nice variance of independence. Some on the end of hotels. We, we went across the board to try and find out what people needed. Now, the key behind this was, we want to try and create this blueprint. So when you start, when you build a gym or when you first start doing it, it's normally because we love either we love doing classes or we love the fitness side of it, or we used to be a PT and we were very good at it. So that's the bit that we love, right? Not many people love the policies in the background, right? So trying to find out the stuff that you need. Now, every single business by default has to has has to have a whistleblowing policy that all your staff have read. That's just one example of something that you might not have, right? But the whole idea is who tells you this stuff? Who gives you it? Who gives you that starting point to go, look, this is the stuff that we need to get this going? So the idea behind this is we got the independents on board. They'd all start inputting their data. Very, very quickly, we could see the variances come out. And that's what we're going to sort of go through. So um, we've done two sessions with them now. We've taught them how to pop stuff in. And we've done a little session on how to share, which we'll go through. But there's a little thing we do called, we call it risk flow mapping. Now, I'm not saying this is the most fun part of the business, right? So, as a troubleshooter, for somewhere like Fitness First, or LA, I used to be the national manager of trainers at LA Fitness. I was a troubleshooter for Fitness First. I did loads of the VA back in the day. Um, and like now, I look after about 700 different leisure centres. But the key behind this, when I went in as a troubleshooter, the first thing I've got to do is make sure that we, the reputation's safe, right? In terms of your business getting closed or whatever is happening, or getting the papers for the wrong reasons, that was really, really important for me. So let's say, for instance, we have a risk assessment on fire, right? So that means that in that risk assessment, it probably says that you've got certain procedures, like the evacuation procedure, as an example. Now, in that risk assessment, it probably also says that there's six, te there's six tasks that happen a day. So that's the risk flow. We go from the risk assessment to the procedure it says you need to the task that it says that you've got to do. Now, just those alone, and I'm going to come into this, means that just to run your business, not even to make it good, you probably need to do around about 97 things a month in order for it just to take over and for you to be safe. I know it's not that much fun, and some of it is it, but the reality behind it is it could come back and bite you on the bubble at a tiny bit. So, operations in numbers. So this is a university. We have nine different universities. I picked ones without pools, right? So I picked them without a pool for the reason of that make, they're all independent gyms, right? Now, the big independent gyms, so let's not kid ourselves. These are sorts of big organisations, but they still have a gym, they still have classes, they still do all the things that most of you probably do. Then we've got large independent gyms, so these are up to 7,000 member sites, and they do around about 33 risk assessments. 
So, and then we've got small independents that do exactly the same as this, which is on a smaller scale, who do exactly the same as these, but on a different scale. And my question is this, right? Why so much difference? What are they doing? Now, we know that these have got, these have got like a Nebosh professional in there, right? They, and they're probably going overboard, right, in terms of the amount of health and safety that they've got in the university side of things. Now, some of it will be overboard, and some of it will be, well, maybe we need that, right? So what we quickly found is this, is that, you know, the likes of Dean come on board, you put your risk assessments in there, and someone else puts theirs in there, and we're like, well, you've got like 28, for instance, and whether they've got, they've got 40, so what's missing? And we start, to, we're trying to do the backfilling. So our whole, our whole aim of what we're trying to do is, when, it, when someone joins the independent gym group in the future, we'd like them to go like this, here's all the risk you need, here's all the policies, here's all the procedures, and here's all the tasks that you should be asking your staff to do, to make sure that you, you're doing it in an effective way. Now, we, we're not gonna charge for this, this whole, it's about learning. I just get dead frustrated going all around, frustrated going all around the country, seeing people all trying to do the same thing, but in totally different ways. We're all trying to run the same types of businesses, but it gets a little time a bit of frustration. So look at this, training and policies, right? 115 in the university. Now, universities are a little bit bum coverish, right? So, Trying to put it in the nicest possible way. But they, they do cover themselves extremely, extremely well. Do I think you need that many? No, but I'll show you in a minute exactly how many you need to make sure that you cover. Then we've got the average independent, 30. Again, why, why so much difference though? Is it that, are they covering themselves that? Are they covering themselves nearly three <coughs> times as much? Nearly four times as much? No, right, but again, when you start off that gym and you like to, remember when COVID kicked in, we had to all start like writing loads of procedures and bits and pieces and all the risk assessments. Who's been trained in doing that thing? Put your hand up if you've been trained in writing risk assessments. If you've got the NEBOSH qualification needed to write them. Okay, but we all need them, right? So not one person wants to have them. I get that. Yeah, I haven't got it. The lad who I worked with has. There's Gregory Boyd. A little bit of that. Um, he's got it, so from our areas, yeah, so he's got the wash so that's fine, we can, we, can, we, can, we can help you. But the idea behind it is that this is a skill set that we would like in the future to go, look, here's a load, have a look at them and make them yours. Rather than you all being on your own, having no help to do this, and just having to crack on. Right, because I don't think it's fair. Yeah, but I can't go to any independent body who'll give me this stuff. They're all too scared to give you it. Because if I give it and you do something wrong, then I might get blamed. Well, we're going to give them to you and say, you do whatever you want with them, but we're not taking the legal requirements, right? We just want to give you that starting point. So, again, the average tasks done in a day, well, this blew me away, right? So, the average university does 122 tasks. Now, we've got a few more departments and a few more people. I'll take that. But well, look at this, 13 a day. 13 tasks is the average. Well, if you do an open and close, there's two of them gone. Right, if you've got a handover, there's your third gone. Right? Then it might be you, you must do like social media or something, that might be the fourth gone. So once you start to question this, it starts to go, okay. Why so much? But we only know what we know. And that's a big problem, right? Because again, as somebody goes around 700 different leisure centres, I go in and I see what I call pockets of genius. So I'll go in and go, wow, that's amazing. Why is everyone not doing that? I'll go into someone and go, oh, we'll never do that, right? That's, that's another point. But there's so much stuff that we could or should be doing, but where do you get it from? So, I think I'll draw that thing for that door. Do the number of staff affect the jobs that need doing? So, in a university, because they've got more staff, does that mean that they do, they're only doing the checks because they've got more staff? Or does it mean that that job still needs doing, whether you've got two people in the building or whether you've got 20? Right, there's a high likelihood that if the job needs doing, it needs doing. Yeah? So, I, I know that normally when I speak to people, like, oh, we're only small. We're only a small organisation. It's like, okay. But in terms of the law, it's pretty much the same, right? In terms of your reputation, in terms of the standards, which is the next question. Out of all these people, who is reputation most important to? Right, now, some people say that universities, but I reckon they've got a legal team. I reckon they've got a team who can fight for them and can protect themselves. I don't know whether you can. I don't know whether you have that resource. So me personally, I think the independent gym, the reputation is more important to yourselves. 
But again, how good are you? You know, these are the questions that we ask the people who came on board and that we ask the dean later on as we get to the end. Is that, you know, is, is the start position where you thought you were? We had six organisations who thought they were really good at what they did. And it didn't take long for most of them to go, maybe we're not then. Okay? But we, we don't normally view ourselves like that. We, we look at the nice bits. How many members have we got? Our members love us because we get dead much feedback off the ones we speak to all the time. All that type of stuff, right? So, is that surprised anyone? The, an independent gym does six and another one does 122 a day. Madness. Yeah. So, this, this, is, this, is, this is the bit where I'm going to show you some of the stuff that we put together to show you some of the bits of pieces that you can get. So, what do we find out in terms of risk? Well, there's at least 55 risk assessments that every single one of you should consider. Right? I'm not saying you need them all, but there's 55 that you should at least consider whether you need these in your business or not. Or not. Okay? And if anyone wants a list of what these are, after the session, give me your email address and we'll send you the list of everything that you're going to need. There's no charge, we're not trying to get you to buy something. If you want to, you can. But the reality behind it is, is we're not. We're, we're trying to we're trying to build this for you lot, so you've got something to do with it. The next one, oh, this is a classic. You all know the fire regulations changed in October 2023. This year, every single business it changed for every single business. I, mean, I know you probably trained all your staff in this already, right? I know I can tell that you're already all over. I can tell by the body language. Yeah. So every single person in this room should have retrained every one of their staff on the new fire regulations that came out. And the regulations are, it used to matter how many people you had in your building. Now it doesn't matter. That was the biggest change that he had. So if you're small, you're definitely under the cost for this. If you need any information on this, add it to the email that you sent to us, and we'll send you a link of all the new changes. It's what we do for our customers, right? But the key behind it is evacuations. People kept missing them. When did you last have an evacuation? Or do you do it at half six in the morning when no one's in? And um, well, the idea behind it, so it's little things like this daily door checks. It only needs to be an open check sheet. It's not like it's not a world beater, right? But by law, you need to have it. It's got to happen. It says somewhere in your risk assessment that you're doing this stuff. Kosh, there's 21 minimum basics. There's a high likelihood you use polish, hopefully. You probably use some antibacterial hand wash. You probably use uh, fairy liquid to wash stuff. You probably have oils in the building. I'll go into them in a bit more detail, but before we even start booking it, there's probably at least that. There's a load more stuff that you'll have. Now, I know this is the boring stuff. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not pretending this is exciting, right? But it has to be done. So we've created the map of everything you need. Anyone that comes onto the beta trial, we give you the whole thing, and the idea is in the future that we will pass this on to the whole of the independent gyms. <coughs> okay, risk. Here's an example of some stuff. I won't go through all of them. You can't read them all, it's too far away. But let me explain just a couple. So, uh, you'll, you'll have with the housekeeping, you'll have with the customer areas, you'll have DSC. Anyone that uses a computer for more than an hour a day needs to have a DSC assessment once a year. When did you last do your hose? <coughs> yeah? But anyway, law, so it's not that, not that important, right? But you, you've got to do it when someone comes in. Uh, utility, storage, with storage, it can be electrical storage, it can be gas storage, it can be chemical storage. They don't need to be different risk assessments, right? It all goes into the same one, it's just a different hazard in the risk assessment. But once you start breaking it down and looking at this, it starts travelling. Does any of your staff ever do any loan working? What does the risk assessment look like? If they work from home, what does that look like? All these rules change by law after COVID. You've got to do it. Now, like I said, this is a little bit of an arse cover, right? You're not going to get any more new members because you do this well. Right? So no one's going to go, well, you've got an amazing home, home working policy, so I'm going to join your gym. Right? But you've still got to do it. It's still got to happen in the background. We'll talk in a minute about how we become good. Okay? So this is 24 hour act. Legionella, you all do them flushes every week, yeah? But you've got to turn your taps on for a certain amount of time, and that all happens, and we're all 100% happy that it's going. This is the idea, right? Then we've got Kosh. So let's have a look. Degreases, polish, floor cleaner, windows, bleaches, toilet duck. Them little things you wee on an aimer. Brilliant. Yeah. Not the chewies that people put in there, they're not yours, they're someone else's. Right? But the whole idea is we've got to have something for that, right? Oils, WD-40, paints, thinners, petrol, if you've got any equipment for doing the weeding that we always do. Um, 
You've got the pool, if you've got a pool, you'll have them bits, general hand soap, shampoo, hand gel, dishwasher, tablets, fairy liquid, toilet blocks, right? By default, you probably need to cost for every single one of them. Put your hand up if you reckon you've got all them. Do you want to put that camera around to show you? Okay. <laughs> so again, this is this is what we're trying to do. Now, don't get me wrong, it depends on what hand soap you use, but you know any product that you buy, they, you can physically ask for the risk, you can ask for these cost, cost sheets on them, yeah? Then organisational stuff, well, this is the other bits that go missing. First aid qualifications. When does it run out? Yeah, so that's a nightmare. And there's an Excel spreadsheet somewhere waiting to be updated. We've all got it. We've all got that one. You go to it and you go, bastard, I've got to do that again. <laughs> yeah? Okay. DBS, we've got like kiddie things happening in there. We've got to look after them. We've got to make sure they've all got the covenant, they're all boxed off. We need to make sure this is happening. ISO, legal documents, fire marshal, and food hygiene, if we do that bit. Well being, what's the new one? Um, well being, you should do some look after your staff. Now we give it a name. I love that. I think it's cool. So the quality and diversity is another one that's great. There'll be industry specific stuff. Then there's a public liability you've got to have, and if people need to have access to it, your insurance docs, your pat testing, Jesus Christ. Has everyone done the, the charges for the mobiles? There's a high light in If you've done it, get in some. Well done. But the good, that's the point, right? It's all this stuff. It seems like, oh my God, it's a, no wonder our business is bleeding hard to run. And this is before we start having a laugh. Like, this is before we start being good at what we do. Misty shops, holy holiday floors, oh, it turns away. Yeah, good. Okay. So that's the full bit. One of the little drinkers, cotton mouth, straight right in. Can you see? Okay. So, policies, procedures, and training. Some policies are non negotiable. There's around about 19 that you need to consider in terms of policies. Okay? Um, health and safety policy, you've got to have that by law. Equal opportunities, data protection, anti harassment, whistleblowing, employment contracts, personal auto enrollment and pensions, non negotiable. Right? Not even up for debate. Whether you like it or not, it's not even up for debate. Then we start getting on to procedures. Emergency action plan, we'll all have that one. We've all got that one, yeah? In case it's a bomb, in case it's an electrical failure, in case it's a structural failure, in case it's a fire, in case we'll have that one, that one's okay. But there's at least 24 things to consider in that. The normal operating procedures, there's probably around about 54 things you need to consider in that. Job specific, now this is the good bit. This is the bit where I start developing people and making them better. Right? So there's about 200 in here if we break them down and have a look at them properly, depending on what job roles you have. Now, you, there's a high likelihood that some of you have got multitaskers, love that. Right, so they do a class, right, and then, then they run off the class and then they're on the desk because they're now receptionists, and then 10 minutes later they're a cleaner, right, then 15 minutes later they're a marketeer, right, so we've got this amazing multi-skilling thing in it, but we've still got to train them to do all that bits, right? We've still got to train them to be good at those bits, but, do we? If I said to any of you, what percentage of your time do you spend developing the business? I mean making it better than it was last month. I don't mean existing, I don't mean just staying open. I mean physically making it better. What percentage of the time would people say, do you reckon? This can be like one of them open bits where people shout stuff out if you want. What percentage of your time do you reckon? Five percent. Twenty? Okay, brilliant. Someone said five percent. Five percent of driving the business. So I, I was in, a, I, was in a, I won't tell you the name of the organisation, but it was a large university, what we call a red brick one, so like the posh ones, right? Do they got the lid before it? Which probably means that they're dead gone. Um, so I went into this, I went into the sports development department and asked them the same question, and they said, oh, we, we haven't got time. And I was like, it's in the name. So you're in sports development, you don't develop. But too often, we just exist, right? So there's about two ones in there, training, Inductions alone, there's at least 18 tasks or things we need to cover over the probation period and at least 100 things that you need to consider depending on how good you want to be. Development, you might want to teach me. Do, do any of you want to grow your business or do you want to like turn it into a franchise? I know I heard that chat this morning where you can grow it and get more sites or you can turn it into a franchise where you can just pick it up and move it. 
Either way, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get you to a position where you go, right, if I want to grow it, new site, add staff. If I want to sell it, new staff, <laughs> new site, add staff. Either way, whatever it is your challenge is, you've got to have all this stuff in place. You need 97 of these things just to exist, not even to be good. And I don't like to be the bearer of bad news. I, I want my site to be good. <coughs> right? It's a slight, I, I don't like the just existing thing. Does anyone ever feel like that? We were just like, ah, you. Uh, so now the rest of the things, so the, the 200 that's in here, the 100 of things which are in here, that's how we start to be good. That's how we start to break it down. We've got a full list at the back end of this. I'll show you very, very quickly an example of a map that we put together for people who come onto the beta. Right? Risk flows, okay, these are the things that people are missing, okay, pretty consistently across the board. Evacuations, DSE assessments, PPE. Sometimes they forget the first P means personal. I went into a site the other week and they had like this, you know, like, a, like a mask that everyone wears. Covid tastic. Um, but understanding that bit, water flushing, we forget to do it. Yeah, I know we sometimes take it off afterwards. You know? Do you only get like a different coloured pen? Does anyone do that? Because you get a different coloured pen and then blag it. I know, I know none of you would do that. But looking at people's body language, and I just said that, so you can see the smirks, and you're like, okay, I reckon there's at least 50%, but I'm not going to play that. Um, development, so we're having going hard. Now, this is the problem, right? If we're not developing the team and making them better, for you lot, it must be so hard to go on holiday, or to have a weekend, or a night to yourself. Right? And this becomes the problem, right? Is you can't replicate yourself. Well, that's what management's about, right? So management's about making people as good as you used to be. Now, can we give them the same passion you've got? Is it their business? Are they driving it the way you're going to? No, but we can definitely get them up to a certain standard. Yeah? So, the whole idea behind it is that these bits become a real problem. It becomes like, oh my God, it's like treading water forever. It just becomes really, really tough. And then you go and on, then do we come back off holiday? Has this ever happened to anyone? You come back to a load of shite. Has anyone ever had that? But you come back and it's like, oh my God, 7,286 emails, all very important by the way. And that's stuff that then people probably could have done, but they didn't do. It's just a little bit frustrating. Yeah? Okay, well, it's because we're not doing these things properly. We don't treat it like, like we want to grow it, like it's, uh, you know, a lot of stuff. How much stuff is in your head that someone else doesn't know? Has anyone ever had that? Yeah? And, and this is the bit, right? What we're trying to do is we're trying to get it out of these people's heads and go, look, this is what we think you need to do in order to do this. So, what we've done to now is we've trained them on how to use the system. That bit was easy, no problem. Now, we, now they start putting their information in and their data. So this is the phase that we're at with the, with the, with the sites that have come on board up to now. Now, what we did is our product is, I'm not pitching, but it's two and a half grand. We give it for about 500 pounds a year. It was 20%, so you can use it for life for that. You know, it's, it's a year price, but it's a major discount we get for coming on board with us. Right? The next sessions that we're going to do is we're going to start doing this because those number differences shouldn't be there. Right? So we need to work with them to say, look, what do you need? Now, we're not going to write it for you, but we will go, here's a template if you want to have a look. If you want to make that yours, then that's absolutely fine to get yourself up and running hell of a lot quicker. We're happy to do that. Right? We're not the risk company that's writing all your stuff and we're going to take the cliff play and everything goes wrong. But if you, if you want to get up and running, you want to get up and running faster, we can give you something so you can make it yours. Yeah? And we think that's really, really important. So that's what we're going to do next. And then after we've got people compliant and safe, then we're going to make them good. Now, we've already said when we have the chats and stuff, it's probably going to take, it's amazing. You know, we're going to ask some questions of Dean in a minute. But we had a chat in the week where we'll talk about what happened when he used to be on reception. So Dean used to be a receptionist and she had an amazing manual. And then she moved into a manager's job and she will explain what's happened to the manual man. But I think some of you already know. Yeah? So, these are the questions that we asked them. So what was your starting point and where you thought you were? So Dean, you came on board, you were pretty confident that you had a good product. Um, what was the answer? Yes, basically. When uh, I took over as club manager in 2019, and between us opening in 2013 and getting to 2019, we've never had a club manager before. And the full six years had just been anyone doing whatever they could. It was all about sales. What can we do? Get the money in, get the members in, look after the members, train the staff. 
and nobody paid any attention to health and safety because like HR, it's the stuff that always just gets left. It's not interesting, it's not bringing the money in. And 2019, when I took over, I now realised actually we have nothing. Was that the um, that you could go to jail now? Yeah, yeah, yeah then, exactly. it, then it was a moment of panic. So we got an external company in and they went through and they just ripped the whole place to shreds. Um, right, okay, this is a list of what you need to do just to be compliant. And then luckily for myself, COVID so, was that free? No, 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 it's very okay. expensive. Just um, luckily for me, COVID hits, and then I have the best part of a year to then sit there and put everything in place and go, yes, we're perfect now. It's all done, and I sat back and relaxed. And then uh, when we went to <coughs> sign up with these guys in August, and I went to start transferring everything from the systems that I had onto the new one, we got. I have done two refurbs since then. Actually, all this stuff I did in 2020 is now out of date again. So where I thought I was pretty perfect, it's there was quite a bit that needed updating. The problem is though, right? You've got to be like Rain Man, you're never right? You've got to be like you've got to constantly be racking your mind when you're running these businesses on your own. There's so many, so many fractions and little bits and pieces that you've got to sort of look at. What we found was, was things like this. So, you know, what did you find? What were the gaps? Now, obviously, you can answer that yourself in a second, but. We, out of the six people that came on board, when we were training people on how to put risk assessments in, we were using proper risk assessments. Right now, you know, add them in, make them yours, that type of thing, but just showing them how to do it. And four of the six went to us, can we have them please, because they're much better than ours. And we were like, yeah, you can have them, that's no problem. But this, that was the first <laughs> the warning signal that came to me. It's like, wow, we haven't got them. And if they have, they like one-liners and stuff. They were showing us some of the stuff they were about to paste in, and they didn't even need pasting. Do you know what I mean? It was that there was that little information in there, and it was like, oh god, okay. So we were like, that was our first sort of our first glaring point, wasn't it? And then you know, from gap perspective, what did you find? You know, when you did it? Yeah, so a lot of our gaps um, with regards to risk assessments were more things that have changed over the last sort of, eighteen months, two years, while we've done a couple of refurbs. It was things that I hadn't actually thought about. You, it pops up once a year. You need to review it. And go, yeah, it's all fine, I haven't changed them. Like, nothing's really changed and you click on OK. It's but do you change the date? You change the date and then sign it again. I know you wouldn't do that, and <laughs> it's really important, but you just re-sign it and go, done. Yeah. And then you sit back and you go, oh, last year I said I was going to do the test and didn't do it, I got it. Luckily enough, nothing's happened. And it's those little bits of reminders. So they're, they're, the, they're the glaring and the obvious things that we found when we started to do it. And what was, what was your main learning? Um, one of the things that I've liked most about it is because now on our old system our risk assessments were there and if some they were available for anyone to read if they ever came to me and said, Oh, can I have a look at this risk assessment or that risk assessment? It's probably happened three or four times in four years. Nobody ever comes to you wanting to see a risk assessment unless they need it for something you know specific. Putting this on there, it's assigned to each member of staff all the risk assessments relevant to their job role. So now I've got um, lifeguards and swimming teachers and gym instructors that they can't go any further without reading these risk assessments and they're going oh actually have you considered x y and z and because i don't do that job at all there's things that i've missed that i would never have ever thought of because unless you go and do that job day in day out you don't think of the little things you don't notice that actually at that corner of the pool there's this issue or you only see what you see, you know, when you're walking around. So having staff be involved in it for the first time, like it's been a real long time. Yeah. That added it. Loaded onto here, so it doesn't matter whether it's I don't know, a housekeeper that comes in or a receptionist or like or anyone can come in, pick up the you know the tablet, and go into any department and do their job. So if the lifeguard phones in sick, okay, it doesn't matter, the right housekeeper, can you go on to pool side? We'll go on, they'll click, here's a little video, so this is how you do a pool test, and if it's this, you do this, and if it's that, you do that, and that's what we're in the process of doing at the moment, we're creating well, I, all it, these videos. In terms of speed, the problem, we've all wrote one of those manuals at the beginning, normally, right? We've, we've, but it, it's only up to date by the time you've finished it. That's the biggest problem, right? Because there's so much information that's in it. But we were saying this is like if I was to go and write a procedure for how to clean a toilet, 
right? That could take me, I don't know, two hours, three hours to get it right with the photographs and the little arrows and all that type of stuff. Now for me to get my phone and go, right, here's the cleaning cover, here's the DVD, start at the top, make sure you get the little curly ears off here, the, the wee splashes down this bit, watch the yellow grouse on the sides, right? It's probably going to take you about a minute longer than it takes to do the job. Upload it and that's now the consistent standard that they have across the organisation. Has anyone ever had this where someone else has trained something in for you but it wasn't quite what you wanted them to say? I call it Chinese whisper training. Where it's like the, the receptionist that you train has now passed it on but hasn't said quite the same stuff that you've said to them. Or as a new member of staff you come in and someone trains you and someone else goes, I don't do it like that, do it like this. Right now, if it's your business, it's got to be your standard. My very first job that I ever had was McDonald's. Look, don't judge me, right? But, 19, it was 1985, spray on trousers, cap, have a nice day, shocking, worst job I've ever had, ever. But still to this day, the best company that I've ever worked for. They have the Mick way, right? Dead, you, get a Mick, you get a Mick degree, honestly, God, the proper cheesy, right? But honestly, God, the systems and processes are amazing. So when I first left McDonald's and I went to the deal, it's like all these five star hotels, like the Belfry, I was like, so wait a minute, you don't train us. You don't, you don't make us good at what we do. You used to assume that we know how to do it because I, it's like me sitting in a taxi and then going, I can, I can be a taxi driver. I've just sat in one, one now, it's brilliant. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's not the same job, you know, just sometimes when people see you doing stuff and be natty, they're going to pick it up. I, I, I do a thing in trade, it's, it's about common sense. Can anybody here name anything that's common sense? Anything at all. Just shout it out. Anything at all that's common sense. Just shout it out for me. Have a good thing. Gritty. Gritty. Okay, but why do we, so. Why, why do you think, isn't it, so people just naturally grit. So kids in schools will just walk past and grit. It'll just come to them. I think there's probably a policy about grit. And I went to a site the other week, it was November, last year, it was November, it was the first frost, we opened the grit bin, it had dog shit bags in and bottles and no grit. Right, so we had to create a policy, so every year in October, we fill that up, so it wasn't like that. Now I'm not, you, you, it might be natural to yourself, but well, this is the type of thing is, when do you grit, how much do you grit, what kid, what kid do you use to grit? It's not common sense, right? Otherwise everyone would do it the same and it happen everywhere you go. So it's a good example. Someone said to me the week crossing the road, and I went, has anyone got kids? Has anyone here got kids? Do you know when you got to walk at age, did you go, yeah, you work it out? <laughs> yeah, no, common practice, common ground, I'm all over like a rash, right? But well, common sense is something you know that you think someone else should. Now, when we're managers and we run our own business, we naturally think that they know what they're doing. And it's amazing how much they don't. So, you know, again, I think one of the things that we found is, is that from where you thought you were going, it slightly changed the path of it. But what it has done, it's steadying everything up. It's giving you a chance of growing and the growth of it. You, you've got to, the staff aren't going to leave as quick enough. Now, don't get me wrong, you're in a big site, right? It's not like it's that. How many members have you got? About 7,000. That's annoying, isn't it? Yeah. So she's got 7,000 members. It's not, it's not a small independent, this one. Well, this is what's funny across the group. It's amazing how, you know, you, you've got loads of stuff in there, but there's been loads of stuff that you haven't had, right? And it's like, you got this, it's like, oh, God, no. And, and that's the bit. So I'm, I'm going to, so there's a little offer if you want to join on, but I'm not that far going to leave that on, right? So I just want to show you the type of map that we're trying to produce for the independents. Can you see that? No. Lost your screen. No, you can't. I've lost my screen. Um, bonus. Let me see whether this will reattach if I whack that back in. IT man, are you good at this? There he is. Here's our IT man. So I'm just going to, I'm going to, if we can get this up, I don't know why it went off. I don't know why I didn't like that. Um, but do that little F5 thing. Oh, there we go. I just need to be present. Just my presence, isn't it? See, <laughs> the computer can feel the nerd on its way. <laughs> so I've just hit it in there. <laughs> It's okay, that was his actual title in our business. He was called Chief Nerd. I'm, I'm, the, C I'm the CEO, I'm the Chief Explaining Officer. So we don't really like titles per se. So what you'll find with this, right? Now, I probably need my glasses for this. Also. Now, you're not gonna be able to read everything that's on it, but this is, this is the risk that people are gonna need, and this is the risk that <coughs> they're gonna need. So you can see it here. Now, if I go down to staff, for instance, you might wanna consider well-being, stress, work-related violence, staff areas, work from home and pregnancy. So you can see what we're trying to do is we're trying to build the hazards and the things that you need in these areas, right? So that's just, that's just risk, that's the fun bit. So then we go on to policies and procedures. So in here, like we said before, these are pretty much most of these are non-negotiable for your organisation. 
Then you'll have the emergency action plan, so there's another 24 of these. So fire, utility, utility cutoffs, light failures, bomb threats, travellers, whatever, right? So not all non-negotiable, but you definitely probably want to consider them of how you deal with certain things in terms of the procedures. Then you've got your normal operating procedures. We break that down, so you've got use of equipment with that, that would be software, tills, card machines, it, it's deeper than that, right? It goes much, much further. Feedback, so comments, actions, general, analyze, blah, 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 blah. Now, the job specific stuff down here is when it starts getting sexier. So, the whole idea behind it, if I was to click on fitness, for instance, now, this is just the dry areas, if you, if you haven't got wet, I haven't gone into the fun health and safety bit, you can say I haven't opened that out. But for additional spend, you've got to train them on supplements, heart rates, PT, workshops. If it goes into classes, member journey completion, all the different steps that you need to train them on, the participation, the gym challenges, the capacity levels for classes, the, the, if, if, you, if you ever want something really, really sexy in the gym, there's a fellow in here called Joe, Joe, one little hand up for you. Hi. Joe's got this amazing thing where all your walls turn into like major videos and stuff, and it makes it quite amazing. Have a little chat with later on. But the whole idea behind it, if I've got that, I've got to train people in. Right? So what happens in the class councils? What happens in class information? There's class assessments. How do we train people? How do we get them up there? Right? I'm not opening the whole thing up, right? But you start to see this is an absolute monster. And now we go on to the task that we want them to do. So just for risk flows alone, like I said, for fire, you've got to do these six. Just for your changing the toilet rooms, you've got to break it into the regular and part of the open and closed. Then you've got your housekeeping checks. That breaks down to standards and equipment. Then you've got the ASC and then you've got, wow, it just goes on. But then what we've got in here is the development. So if you want to train your staff to be good, what do you need to teach them about commercially? What do you need to teach them about people? What do you need to teach them about themselves? I can keep going, right? I'm not going to because it'll do your head in. But the whole idea, if I open up this whole thing, if I involve all sub-branches, now we're not going to be able to read this, I'm going to make it really small. No wonder our bleeding business is hard to run. I know you can't read that, but this is everything we need to do to run these properly. Right? So, the idea behind it, if anyone wants to come and have a chat with us and help us with the, the beta trial, I think it's gone to a thousand pound now if you want to come on. If you don't, it's fine, we're still doing it. Right? I, I don't know whether Rob will sell you the data that comes out at the end. We're not selling it as an organisation, right? If you come on with us, it's free. But the whole idea, we want, you, we want somewhere where you can go, I need this, I need this, I need this. Do you have any questions? Because I have talked a lot. I feel like I've gone on a little bit, to be honest. I normally go down a little rant route as well. I don't mean to. I just get frustrated. Any questions? So, either what. Currently, what's your recommendation in regards my online video training versus in person? Well, it depends on how many staff you've got, right? Now, the reality is we've just got Leeds Beckett University to come on board. They just trained six receptionists, and the duty manager went great, amazing. Now, the problem is the video will keep it to the same standard, the person might not. Right? Now, the, what's the difference between. Now, I can't ask the video a question, that's probably the only thing. But, so this manager took six new receptions, and universities are mad, right? So they've got this busload of people coming every September and uh, October, so they all come in. So he, he could train six receptions without leaving his job. Because what would have normally happened last year, he would have had to come off his job to do all this training, to then go back and go, oh my god, this is a nightmare because no one's done my stuff for me. So to me, it's a balance, right? But why not? If I want to get the standard of how to clean the toilets, I've only got to do it once. It beats the 50 times for the next 10 years when I've got to take 50 different people to do it. And I know it's all the same standard. So I, I personally think that it's the way to go. And you know, we should, the written word is the worst form to use, right? There was a study by, done by a fellow called Dr. Albert Meridian. 7% of, the, of communication is words, so why would you choose that? 35% is the pitch in how you deliver it, and 50, sorry, 38, and 55% is body language. Well, the video gives you all of it. So, just, yeah, it gives you so much more. Anyone else? I've either done my job, or I'm starving. <laughs> um, thank you very much for your time, it's been a pleasure. If you need any information on us, my email is craig at opspal, O-P-S-P-A-L. Send me an email, I will send you a list of the risk assessments that you might need if that's what you wanted. Um, I won't give you the whole thing because that's the beta trialists, but the whole idea behind it is we're trying to give you an idea that maybe there might be a few gaps there that some organisations can help you with. Hope you've enjoyed it, hope I wasn't too scouse, enjoy.